So let's start with the video head impulse test. This is something that has become quite popular in the last few years and the reason that it has become popular is because it is a way that you can actually individually test all six semicircular canals. Um, and it's something that once you develop the technique, you can do very easily and very quickly. <clears throat> it doesn't, re doesn't require any response from the patient except that he um, sits there and cooperates. It's not an active test for the patient, it's passive, meaning the patient doesn't have to do anything, you do it for them. And these systems are like this. This happens to be an interacoustics IC cam, it's called, uh, a video head impulse test system. And it simply is a set of goggles like this. And the goggles are unique in that they're very, very lightweight, extremely lightweight. And, um, and you have an infrared camera here, a very high high-speed infrared camera, so it's extremely high resolution. Uh, here's the camera at the, at the tip of it, but built into here is a motion sensor as well, so that you can measure head movement versus eye movement. And you're actually using the vestibular ocular reflex to actually get this response. So all of the hardware involved in this is this one simple headset and it just contains a very lightweight, very high resolution infrared camera to record eye movement, uh, as well as a motion sensor to record head movement. And head movement is done by the clinician, not the patient, and it's done in both the uh, horizontal plane and the vertical plane. And this is what re re requires technique. It's extremely technique sensitive and it takes a while, it takes some practice to get good at actually performing the proper impulse, which would be like this. And uh, somebody like uh, Dr. Gans does a great job at teaching people how to, how to do this. Uh, but the equipment actually teaches you how to do it as well. Because for every impulse that you try to make, uh, when you do it correctly, you get a nice green check mark like this. In other words, you move the he head fast enough. Uh, and when you don't, you get a red X that tells you, well, we're going to reject that one because you didn't move the head fast enough. So it takes a little bit of practice, but once you've got it down, you can do it on anybody who's cooperating. And uh, you end up with a graph like this that shows you head movement versus eye movement. Uh, this, is, this is, in this case, the head movement here. And you simply are trying to move the head fast enough that it falls within this red area. And when it does, you get this green check mark. And, the system records head movement versus eye movement, and you expect the eyes to move in an equal and opposite direction uh, via the vestibular ocular reflex. You expect the eye to move in an equal to, but opposite direction of the head when you do this impulse. And so, the way you end up testing all six semicircular canals is, um, you do one that's lateral, in other words, this is the lateral canals and this is on the horizontal plane. That's mo motions like this. And then you end up just turning the patient's head about 40 degrees uh, to the side and then you're going to be moving the head in the uh, horizontal direction. And that's called LARP. L-A-R-P, that is in order to test the left anterior and the right posterior semicircular canal. And then when you do it with the head turned in the opposite direction, it's called a LARP. You're testing the right anteri anterior and the left posterior canal. So in all, you've ended up 
testing all six canals. And uh, again, this takes practice, especially the vertical movements. The horizontal movements are the ones that we teach first and get people to, to actually be able to do that consistently. And I tell people whenever they are doing something that's technique sensitive, uh, get to the point where you can walk into your clinic and you can say, I can, I can do this test on any of you normal people and come up with normal results immediately. So you have so much confidence that when you have a normal cooperative patient, you can get a normal result uh, without any question. And then when you do get something that's not normal, you have uh, a high confidence level that it is abnormal and it's not just a user error. And so once you develop the ability to do these, then this is a quick and easy test. And it's very comprehensive because we're talking about uh, all six canals rather than one canal, right? And that's what you would do when you did a caloric test, just a lateral canal. And all of these things is in a, uh, it, it's, it's in the attempt to be more sensitive to actually finding pathology rather than having the patient come back with no findings, though they still have legitimate uh, symptoms. But in the end, you end up with a graph like this. This is head movement here. And of course, we see the eye movement is equal and opposite to it. And when you have a result like that, that's normal. So there's nothing wrong with that semicircular canal. However, when there is an impairment, you end up with a corrective saccade like this. This would be called an overt saccade. And it actually, it actually took place after the head or the, the particular head impulse had just ended. And doctors have been doing this. Uh, in fact, I just installed a system at the Shepherd Spinal Center in Atlanta and they had been doing a head impulse test all along when they've been doing it bedside. And they, try, they, they do the head impulses as they watch the patient's eyes and they try to see this uh, overt saccade that takes place uh, after, the, after the head movement. Notice that the, the eye in this case didn't, didn't move equal and opposite. This is the head movement and this is the eye movement and the eye didn't move equal and opposite, not quite equal, but then there's a corrective saccade that takes place at the end. This is the abnormal finding, and it indicates an impairment in that canal. But some, and this you could see if you were trained, you could actually see this if you just did it by yourself without recording anything bedside. The problem is that there are also covert saccades, like this one, this occurred while the, uh, the head impulse was taking place. And that you would never be able to see. It's too quick and you wouldn't be able to see it. And so um, that's why this type of equipment is necessary to record this. So you're just going to make about 10 to 15 of these him impulses in each one of these directions. You're going to do a right and left lateral, and then you're going to do the LARP and the RARP LAUP test, and you've got them all. And in the end, a normal patient is going to look like this. These were the two lateral canals, okay, right and left. Uh, and you, you end up with a trace that is symmetrical like this, and there are no corrective saccades, either covert or overt, in there. And then the equipment gives you some other types of analysis. It's just a graph, in this case, it's a graph of gain. Um, and, and, and the right impulses are red and the left impulses are blue. And when this is a normal test, these are all clustered in the same area. And uh, they give you other graphs. And when the graphs are symmetrical, left, versus right like this, uh, left versus right like that, uh, then you know without a doubt that there's absolutely nothing wrong with this patient. But watch what you get when you have a patient with a vestibular anomaly. It's obvious. These are the corrective saccades, very, very clearly there, and that everything is asymmetrical on the numbers. Uh, 
here you can see that there's a, a major problem on the left, nowhere near sufficient gain. The proper gain would be, or perfect gain would be 1.0 here. And you have an asymmetry here that's obvious. You've got an asymmetry here that's obvious. So uh, this is a quick and easy and very, very inclusive test to be able to do once you develop the, um, the, the proper technique. I'll get that in a second. In the end, you have all six canals, and you have a, a graph uh, printout that looks like this. But we have more interest in this, even though there's no CPT code for it, because uh, it is quick and easy and comprehensive, uh, and uh, there's a lot of interest in it. We, we actually installed more of these in, so far in, nine, in 2017 than we have in uh, since the system what was was introduced, uh, so in the last three years we sold more in the, in the last nine months than than we have sold in in the two two years before that. So it's it's getting uh, uh, and and who buys it? Balance centers, uh, hospital-based balance centers, and and practice-based private practice-based balance centers. But these are centers that are trying to be trying to be. Uh, very comprehensive in their testing, and they add this to the vestibular testing that they've already been doing. 